Hey everybody, it's Trevor here with the channel where every day is range day. In this week's video, we're looking at some cool new gear from Core Essentials. And this time, we're going to be doing an unboxing and first impressions on the new micro adjustable battle belts. Let's check it out. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in this week for another range day video and as I said before, we're going to be taking our first looks and giving some first impressions at the new micro adjustable battle belts from Core Essentials. And as a disclaimer up front, Core did send us these to review here on the channel. They didn't pay us for a good review or no money was exchanged for the products or promotion or anything like that. They sent us these belts to test out so that's what we're going to do. Again, I haven't even opened this just yet. So we're going to be tearing into this box and seeing what you get when you order the complete battle belt kit from Core Essentials. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of Core and I've been talking about their products on the channel ever since I got my first belt maybe two years ago or something like that. So I'm happy to be doing another review for them. And if you find yourself over at coreessentials.com looking to pick up a sweet new belt, make sure you use code RANGEDAY10 at checkout for a cool 10% off your order. Thanks to Core for letting us set that up for you guys. We're happy to have that discount code out there for our viewers here on the channel. Now taking a look at what you get here in the box from Core. Again, this is the Core Essentials Micro Adjustable Battle Belt. You get this little instruction manual on here that goes over a bit about how to set up the belt and each of the different pieces and what they do. There's also a QR code on the front that'll link to some instructions, but hey, that's what we're here for. So let's take a look at that and then I'll go into sizing it for you. Like all of Core's products, they come in an extra long length and it's sort of up to you to cut them to your exact size. This gives you a nice good custom fit, but you kind of got to make sure you pay attention to what you're doing so you don't cut your belt too short. Again, I'd usually recommend cutting it a little long in case you're not sure, because there's definitely no going back once you start chopping these things up. So taking a look at what all is in the box, of course they sent us an optional belt keeper hanger. This lets you take your core belts, like my EDC multicam black belt here. You can click it right there on the buckle and hang these in your closet. If you have a couple different belts, this is a nice and handy storage method. Definitely helpful if you have multiple belts, say an EDC belt for going around town, a leather belt for checking in at the office, and then a battle belt for your favorite days at the range. The next little item we have here in the box is of course the buckle itself. I want to say this is the B1 belt for the battle belts here. It works pretty similarly to all their other buckles. It has the spring adjusted release clamp that helps you control the ratcheting mechanism and the little clamp on the back with these teeth that help clamp the buckle onto the belt once you size it. We'll get into that sizing bit here in a minute. And they send it to us in this nice powder coated black. Pretty good looking buckle if you ask me. It's got hexagons on there and you know I give extra points for those. From there, it looks like we have a little hardware kit along with some measuring tapes and a belt keeper loop, which will be important for sizing the belt. And out of that little bundle, we do have this little white measuring tape here, and it's important to use this when sizing your belt, not just a regular measuring tape. This core specific one is definitely what you're gonna need there, or else you might get the sizing wrong. We also have a little end cap for the inner belt, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then we have another belt keeper here, which helps keep the more rigid end of the belt from sticking out once you have your belt on. This EDC one has one that's kind of similar, so we'll use that again once we get the belt all fitted up. And then of course we have the two belts wrapped in plastic here. I'll go over the inner belt first, get that unwrapped. And if we take a quick look at this one here, this is the inner belt that's gonna go through your belt loops. And it has a ring of the Velcro basically all the way around the belt. And then the inner side is the core traditional power core belt material, super strong, super tough. Things get a little more interesting on this inner belt here once we get to the front side. Of course, we have a little Velcro tongue piece that's used to kind of tie it into the other half of the Velcro. But then we have this four or five inch stretch of this hex material. This will be what allows the belt to be adjustable. So once you have it made it up to the molly portion of the belt and you cinch the buckle in and out, this very thin layer of the hex material will be that adjustment point. You can see here it'll just sort of collapse and fold in. It's pretty thin, so it's not really gonna bunch up and bother you too much, but it is flexible and importantly so, and appears to be decently strong right off the bat. All the stitching on here looks to be pretty well done, definitely rated for a lot of weight. And this will be, again, the inner belt with the source of adjustability being this hexagonal piece of flexible fabric here in the middle. Up next, we have the actual outer belt, which has our molly attachments. This is a much more rigid version of the belt, even compared to their EDC belts. Core claims it's about twice as rigid as these, and just giving it a quick feel, it is definitely significantly more rigid than their normal EDC belts. In order to pair with the soft Velcro on the outside of the inner belt, 
the inside of the outer belt is lined with the tougher Velcro that will made up accordingly, as you can see here, just like that. And this will end up wrapping around your belt loops on the outside of your pants. So that's the whole inside of the belt. And on the inside here, you can see core signature track system. This gives you the adjustability of these ratcheting style belts. And this track system has about four to five inches of adjustability here, which is what will pair up with this cinching ability of the hexagonal fabric there. Again, both of these pieces will have to be cut to fit. You can see they're way, way, way long right now, and I believe they'll fit waist sizes anywhere up to 48 inches or so. My pant size is about a 30 inch waist, so that's what I'm gonna be sizing this to. And this particular measuring tape here is essential in getting that done. Taking a closer look at the belt itself here, it does have two rows of molly attachments on the top and bottom to fit any of your range gear on this belt, like mag pouches, holsters, things like that. And there is plenty of room for it. I gotta say, this is a pretty thick and durable belt material right off the bat. It is a great deal thicker than the actual EDC belts. We'll take a closer look at that here in a minute. They rate this belt for about 20 pounds a gear versus, you know, seven or something like that on their EDC belts. But honestly, if you can fit it on this belt, it's probably gonna stay on there and hold the weight just fine. This thing's pretty beefy, definitely well built. All the stitching is quadruple done, it looks like. Nothing's really gonna come tearing out of here. I think the molly webbing on the side is rated for something like 500 pounds or more. Definitely looking like a super strong product. I have high hopes for testing this out. I'm definitely excited to be adding it to our kit. And special thanks again to Core for sending this out to us to look at. But now that we've gone through a quick unboxing of everything that you get when you order the adjustable battle belts from Core Essentials, now we're gonna switch to a quick overhead view of setting this belt up for you for the first time. Let's check it out. All right guys, so here we are with a top-down view of everything. We'll just take a closer look at all the different pieces that Core sent us here, and then we'll get into actually sizing the belt. First and foremost is of course the buckle again, a nice, powder coated black finish with some hexagons for extra style points. This is the two set screws and the little spiky clamp that'll actually grab onto this outer belt here and secure the buckle to it once we cut it to fit. And then we have the little spring loaded adjuster here which helps with the ratcheting mechanism. That'll let you loosen and tighten the belt whenever you want. Apart from the buckle, we do have another belt keeper. This one's Velcro, but noticeably better construction than the original one I had here. This is a little extra Velcro piece that'll clip onto the back of the belt itself, and then the two loops to help keep the uh, firm end of the belt here closer to your body. From there, we have a little end cap, which I believe goes onto the inner portion of the belt. Just a little spiky clamp here to help keep the end of that belt together once you cut it. Then of course we have the core measuring tape. Again, you wanna use this specific measuring tape and not one of your own cloth tapes or anything like that, just to make sure that your belt gets cut properly the first time. Because again, once you cut it, can't really go back. And then also as an additional bonus, this is an optional item you can get when ordering your core belts. This is just a little belt hanger. This belt hanger works with their buckles, so you can just slide it on here and it'll hang. So if you have three or four different belts, you can use this to keep them neatly stored in a closet versus just having them thrown about or folded up somewhere. So nice little thing to have. Thanks Core for sending it out. And again, Core does send this little instruction booklet here. It's what I'm gonna be using to go through these belts. And it should get you set up pretty well with all these different pieces. Make sure you get your belt sized right the first time. So let's get into it. Step number one is going to be sizing the outer belt. So what we're gonna be doing is taking the cloth tape that they have here, we're gonna be lining it up with the end of the belt, which would be uh, this portion here with the ratchet on it. We're basically gonna be measuring from this end of the belt over to finding our pant size, and then we're gonna be cutting here. Make sure you measure for away from this because you want this piece to stay. You want your cut to be somewhere on this end of the belt without the ratchet. And here we go, first bit on the tape here. It does say to line up with the inner and outer belt tip with the track portion should be right here. So that will correspond with this, kind of like that, when we get going here. Again, you don't want to cut anywhere near this. You want this to maintain its position on the longer portion of the belt that you're going to end up wearing. Again, another warning here, use only this measuring tape to cut. And again, the warranty doesn't cover it if you mess it up, so definitely take your time with this. And there's even more instructions on the belt itself, so we're going to line it up, find our pant size on, and tape it to cut. It starts at the 28-inch mark. It goes all the way out to 48 inches. So if your common pant size falls within this range, this belt's got you covered. And I'm a 30 inch waist on my pants, so that's what we're gonna end up doing. But I'm gonna line it up here, tip of the belt to the tip of the tape, and we're gonna be running this right along the track here, how you know you're doing it right. We're just gonna run this along the length of the belt until I find my 30 inch pant size. 
Then we're gonna make a mark there and give it a cut. Try and keep it on the outside of one of the molly patches, just make sure we don't sever one of those loops. If you have to go up an inch to do that, that's fine, but I definitely go up an inch versus lower an inch, just to make sure it fits. So this is where we get to when I size the belt for my 30 inch seam. If we hold this tape on here and flip it over, you can see that I'm right about there, which is just on the outside of this particular layer of molly stitching, this one right here, so I'm actually gonna cut it on this side of the molly here just to keep that a little bit of extra length there make sure I'm not cutting this down the middle of the straps just so it's usable. So I'm gonna take that and cut it right here along this particular piece of molly. And to do so, I'm gonna be using a very sturdy pair of shears or very sharp kitchen scissors that you can see here. You're definitely not gonna be getting through this with your first grade pair of safety scissors. This is pretty tough stuff to cut. So you're gonna need something pretty sharp. So I'm gonna cut it just on the outside of this particular piece of stitching here. So I got an extra inch. And if it ends up being a smidge too big, I can always take the belt buckle back off and cut another inch, but it's better safe than sorry with these type things. So I'm gonna give it a good cut here, doing my best to keep it square. They also say that you can use a serrated knife to do this, but man, I don't know what kind of knife you gotta have to cut through this stuff like that. This stuff is super tough. There we go, we made it through the belt here. This will just be a scrap piece here. I don't know if you can come up with any other uses for it, but hey, if you have a creative idea, leave it down below in the comments. I'd be curious to see what you come up with. Well, I'm gonna set that to the side, and this loop now is what is going to become our outer belt, with this piece going into the buckle. You can see a couple little frayed bits here. I'm just gonna kinda clean up with the scissors a little. Pretty common with this type of material, and a common way to get rid of that is just lightly singe it with a lighter or something. I don't have a lighter on me for whatever reason. I guess mine ran out of juice, but we're gonna use matches, kinda old school. And just singe the edges of it here, like that, so they're not so frayed. And now that's nice and clean, good to go. Now that our outer belt is cut to size here, I'm gonna set it off to the side and now we're gonna take a look at the inner belt. Here we have the softer inner belt that actually goes through your belt loops with the unique hexagonal piece of flexible material here that gives these belts their unique adjustability. We're gonna size these in a very similar manner, but the one difference to keep in mind is that you're gonna take your pant size minus one inch so that you don't have too much overlap between this belt and the outer belt off to the side. Again, this is going to be the tip of the belt here that you use to line up the tip of the measuring tape. You want this piece to be off to your left when you're doing this, if you're following like me, because you don't want to cut this piece off of the belt. Very important that you do that. So I've got it lined up with this little pull tab here, just like that. And then I'm going to string this along the belt until we get to the size that we cut the outer belt with minus one inch. Don't forget that minus one inch bit or else you're just gonna end up cutting it off later so that the belt doesn't interfere with itself when you're sizing it. My pant size is 30 inches, so normally that'd be 29 if it lined up just right, but I gave myself an extra row of molly there, so I'm actually gonna go for 31 minus one. So I'm gonna cut this at 30 inches. So 30 inches is right here. Again, using my super tough shears. Anything heavy duty will work. Doing our best to keep the cut square here. There we have it. Again, more scrap material here that I'm gonna set off to the side. Just not gonna be using it. And now we have our cut size inner belt. Not as much for nylon fraying as we had on the last one here, but just a little bit. So I'll clean that up with another match, just like this to get the little frays done. So now we have both of our belts cut to size. I do not believe that we're gonna be needing this tape anymore. So I'm just gonna roll this up and get it out of the way. So now we got our inner belt and our outer belt. Next step from there is to attach this buckle to the actual outer belt itself. So you're gonna undo the little clamp here and take our Allen key, with what I imagine are some spare screws. We're just gonna back these out most of the way so we can get the belt in this little slot here. You can see the screws are currently sticking down. We're gonna back those up just so we can get our outer belt in there so that should be good to go. And we're gonna take this buckle and slide it on the end of the belt here. This is the inside so we're gonna stick it on there something like this you can see the belt itself coming up here in this little gap and we're going to seat this fully against the back edge and now that we have the buckle fully seated we're going to clamp down on the teeth first good tough fit there but a nice snap has it in there and already this buckle probably isn't ever going to come out of here but then we're just going to lightly torque these screws down until they are flush with the back of the buckle. Again, this little Allen key is all you should use here. Do not go crazy on tightening these down. 
There's no need for it. You could probably damage something with the buckle if you end up torquing these with your giant Oonga Boonga garage torque wrench. Just take it easy on here, all right? Now we got that first one in there just so it's just flush with this little piece on the back of the buckle. And then we're gonna finish off the second screw here. And there you go, that's all you gotta do. But now our belt buckle is on there and you can see that it works very similar to the other core belts with our ratcheting system on the inside. You click this button here and it'll let it go. So now we should be ready to try these on to see how they fit. And again, how that's gonna work, we're gonna take this inner belt here and feed it through our belt loops. And then we're gonna wrap this tail end here right like that around the outside of the inner belt here. There's another piece of uh, Velcro on here that'll attach to help with that. And again, you're gonna to wanna to put this on so this little mesh piece here with the hexagons is over your front zipper, centered on your pants, so to speak. And then you're gonna end up wrapping this around the outside, feeding this through. This is gonna be clamped in here. And then once it's on the person, it'll fit a little bit better, but it'll look something like this. So that when you have the belt on, this little piece will fold up in this dead space here. And then when you wanna tighten the belt some more, this little mesh fabric will take up that slack. And then if you need to loosen it for whatever reason, right here, you can do that and it'll go all the way back out. Pretty neat little contraption here. I was wondering how this was gonna work with the particular inner outer belt setup, being that it's adjustable. Most of the belts these days have a similar inner outer belt construction, but it's fixed and a little more difficult to adjust. You put your inner belt on and then you basically just wrap this around here and clip it on with a cobra buckle and that's pretty much all you get. It's a little bit more involved to adjust it. This is actually a pretty unique system here and I'm honestly pretty impressed with how it's looking here. Now let's try this on and see how it fits. All right guys, now that we have both the inner and the outer belts cut to size, now we're gonna try them on and see if we need to do any adjustments, then also go over through um, how the belt's supposed to actually fit. So we'll start by feeding the cut piece through our belt loops here on this inner belt, probably stick this through the front loop, and then we'll wanna pull this so that the Velcro piece is aligned, and then there's no Velcro lining up between or behind this hex mesh piece. Then you're gonna to wanna to center this hex piece over your button and the zipper on the front of your pants, but you still have this piece right here isn't cinched up at all, and that's where any tightening adjustment's gonna come from with the outer belt. And that looks like it's a little bit of adjustment this might offer. You could take this piece of Velcro here, let it out slightly, and then that could accommodate somebody that has a slightly larger waist size, and then the ratcheting adjustments would be um, adjustable to boot on the outer belt. We'll have to play with that a bit some just to make sure we get it right, but it does look like that could be an opportunity if you plan on having multiple people use the same piece of gear. That being said, we have the adjustable hex piece centered on my belt here, and then we're gonna take the outer belt and basically wrap it around. So we're gonna place the buckle so it's on the right side of the mesh here, roughly centered, and then you just start pressing the Velcro from the outer belt and wrapping it around yourself. And then once you have it through, you can tighten it up with the ratcheting to get the adjustability, and that's where you hear those clicks. Now here it looks like it fits pretty good actually. The belt's on nice and tight. You can use the included belt keeper here to go in between the inner and outer belts, so you just lift that off just a smidge. Slide that through here so it bites on the Velcro on the inside of the outer belt. Then you can wrap the belt keeper around just like that so it keeps this little end of the belt nice and tight to your body. But having this all said and done, it looks like it fits me pretty well. The molly's on there pretty nice and tight to the inner belt. And I will note that I have the ratchet entirely compressed so the belt is as short as it can get right now. That means I could potentially cut more off the outer belt. Luckily for me, it's just tight enough where I'd like to have it right here so I don't actually need to cut more off. If you tighten the belt all the way and it's still not tight enough, that means your outer belt's still too long. So back it off an inch or another molly section and try it again. Again, I have it sized so it's just nice and tight and the little bit of hex fabric is folded up just a little bit in between the different pieces of the inner belt. And it's so thin and flexible that you don't actually feel it um, bunching up at all. I don't feel anything weird being tucked in there. And, and the amount of take up that it has doesn't really seem to bother me at all. I, I honestly don't even notice it. Now it is a thinner piece of the inner belt and it's protected nicely by the outer belt, so I don't think it should really be at risk to um, snagging and therefore tearing on anything like that, but I would imagine it is the weakest part of the inner belt and probably the whole belt system just because it's a thinner piece of fabric, but that doesn't mean it's a weak part. Just because it's the weakest of the set doesn't mean it's particularly fragile, I suppose. Nevertheless, that would be a wear or durability point to watch out for as we test this belt a bit more, but just like everything else from Core, I'm pretty sure it's gonna hold up pretty well. I wasn't entirely sure how I liked just Velcro holding this thing on, but it's so much Velcro and so much wrap that this thing definitely isn't going anywhere. 
and I mean, I wouldn't have any concerns about it staying put around the inner belt. That looks like it all fits pretty well for me. So the last step is just for the inner belt itself. You can take it back off and you'll notice that we still have a little loose frayed end here. Well, I melted the frays off. We have a loose, fresh cut end here on the inner belt. Once you have this sized appropriately, you can take the little metal clamp on here that's provided with the belt kit and just slide that over here to cover the loose end, just like that. It has a little bit of teeth on the inside that you can just press down on. You might need to take a pair of pliers or clamp it in a vise or something like that if you really want a solid bite. And that just helps you protect the end of the belt when you're putting it on and taking it back off, just so you don't have any excessive fraying there. And that's all you need to do to complete the setup. And now the belt is all ready to kit out with other different types of Molly gear. You've seen my range set up before with some STAC mag pouches that I'm gonna be putting on here. And then the T-Rex Arms Ragnarok for my Glocks that goes on this side. Definitely gonna be throwing those on this belt. And probably going to add a couple more items to make use of all the molly real estate around the back and be sure to stay tuned to the channel for those setups coming down in the future we'll be doing them likely for my own kit on this particular belt and then we're also again setting up a guest belt for other people that come to the range chandler and mac will be walking through that one in the future as well and that looks like it's going to be it for the video today guys on my unboxing first impressions and some sizing information on the new micro adjustable battle belts from Core Essentials. We went through and sized this belt for me today, so you have a step-by-step -step guide for sizing your own if you decide to pick one up. And make sure when you're at coreessentials.com to use code RANGEDAY10 at checkout for 10% off your order. And overall, for my very first impressions with unboxing this belt, it looks like a phenomenal product. You can get the complete kit from Core Essentials and it retails for around $139.99. So that brings it right up at around $140. It's a little expensive, but in terms of battle belts, I think that's quite a fair price. And I know some full systems that are also even more expensive than that. And hey, now you know a quick way to get 10% off. But overall, my first impressions after unboxing and assembling this belt for the first time are incredibly positive. Like the other core products I've used in the past, everything is made phenomenally well, and it looks like it's an incredibly tough and durable belt for range duty use. The inner outer belt system works very, very well together, but I should note that they won't work with other systems. You kind of need both of these pieces together for the system to work as it's intended to. Other belts won't have this adjustable piece here in the middle, and then the outer belt system just isn't gonna work with the adjustment. And this really is a very interesting design to me. It's very well thought out, and this little piece of flexible fabric here just folds right up like that you hardly even notice it's folded up at all and i'm super excited to test it out at the range and thanks again to core for sending this out we definitely appreciate it if you like this video feel free to leave a like down below and if you have any questions about this belt sizing it for yourself or somebody else or any other aspects about the adjustability of this battle belt from core feel free to leave them down below in the comments we would love to hear from you and as always make sure you subscribe to the channel where every day is range day thanks for watching Thank you.